Hey guys, Greg here, Bone Tactical. And you may have guessed already, just judging by my outfit and my surroundings, that I'm filming my survival and bug out series. If you had guessed that, you'd be correct. This particular episode is the navigation episode. There may be something behind me that you can tell uh, just looking at the video so far of one tip that I'm going to give. If you can't tell, then I will mention it here in a bit, but if you can, comment below. So going in from there, if you are for some reason, if you're already new or if you haven't already heard of this series, if you're new to my channel or if you're new to this series of videos, I have wrote a survival manual and I originally wrote the survival manual to be included in a survival system that I use that I've developed through my experience surviving non-permissive environments that I also sell on my website. But this is not about selling. This video is going to be about, and this full series is about sharing information. So that being said, I'm basically giving away a lot of the stuff that's in my book, not everything, but I'm giving away a lot of the stuff that's in my book free to you guys to pick up on your own and, and be able to practice some of these skills that are taught here. Now, this is the book. This book comes with the uh, full system here. This is the this is the full system that we're out testing. We're actually testing some new stuff. One of those new things that we're testing is a new compass. We'll get into that in a second. This this is the I'm actually doing this YouTube series in the same s setup as the book. Episode one, survival basics. Episode two was water. Episode three was fire. These are all up on the channel, by the way. Episode four was the rule of threes. And uh, episode five was security. Episode six was shelter. Episode seven was food. Episode eight was tools. Episode nine was medical. And this is episode 10, which is navigation. The final episode will be cordage, right? In this episode of navigation, what we're actually going to discuss is kind of a general advice. I will open this compass right here. Actually, this one's already open. I just stuck it in there to be able to show the, uh, the packing that it comes in, right? I actually recently partnered with SOL. And the reason that I did that is because these guys make an incredibly accurate compass, okay? What you want to kind of look for a lot of times is accuracy and your reset on your compass here. You can see how this compass needle really is just always staying in the same direction. Accuracy is a big deal with your compass. I can, uh, I can you know, find north, make sure that it's far away from any kind of a uh, metal device that could be throwing it off and then kind of hit that north. And then I can actually find out my bearing here based off of that north. Okay and all that kind of stuff. I can put it on top of a map and use it as a map compass and really get in depth with the accuracy of this compass. There's actually three compasses in my, in my system that I sell on my website. So that just gives you the, that just lets you know how important compasses must be. But the reason that you gather, that you wanna get your bearings, so to speak, is so you can know where you're going. But before any of that, so the first thing really about getting your bearings is actually knowing where you're at in pretty much real time, as well as knowing where you're going. You may not be able to plan or predict the future, but if you're taking a trip and going somewhere, while you're on your way to that trip or ahead of time if possible, you can do a little investigation on what the area is like, where there's fresh water sources in the area, where are the dangerous, what's dangerous, and where are the dangerous areas? Where are the safe areas? I'm here down in Central America. It's good to know where bodies of water are, what bodies of water are drinkable and what aren't, how to purify water if you need to. It's good to know what areas are safe. It's good to know that some of the, even in some of the biggest cities, uh, the most dangerous cities, the big cities, and very uh, much of them in Central America, El Salvador, Honduras, Guatemala, a lot of them are quite dangerous, Mexico, but they have very nice areas like malls, for example, which in the United States, malls aren't necessarily incredibly safe. But in Central America, malls are incredibly safe, especially the higher end malls. So 
you have things like that that you could know that where there's a lot of there's a lot of armed guards in areas like that and there just doesn't tend to be as much violence or hardly ever robberies or and and random violence is not a thing so no things about where you're going since we're out here and we're talking about bugging out and survival we're going to talk about navigation in a in a rural environment not necessarily a urban environment but these same principles apply so as i'm you know checking this compass and i want to gain a bearing let's say that i wanted to go i'm gonna put this here okay i'm gonna judge my north Let's say that I wanted to go 20 degrees or 30 degrees north. All right, 30 degrees north is right about here. All right, so you can see 30 degrees north is over my left shoulder. Well, if I program 30 degrees north, that is the top peak of this mountain at 30 degrees north. So right off of 30 degrees north, now I can put this compass around my neck I can gauge that I want to go 30 degrees north, right? I, I'm obviously, if I'm going to have an accurate that, if I'm going to have a ra uh, a reading or a, or a gauge or a guide or a bearing that accurate, then I'm going to get it off of a map, right? But let's just say that 30 degrees north is the bearing that I've discovered or that I've gauged that I want to go. So now I can walk any really way I want to walk until I hit that mountain peak. When I hit that mountain peak, then I, I can take another read, right, from that mountain peak. And once I hit that mountain peak, that's another thing about traveling up. I can see everything from that mountain peak. So then I can plot multiple guides. I can say, okay, this is my line. This is my line of sight. I have, there's a giant tree here. There's a church here. There's a abandoned house here. All these things are kind of connected. So when I go down off that mountain and my line of sight is diminished, I can still find that giant tree. Right, I can connect the dots. If I don't have that ability, if I can't see any kind of any kind of pointer at all, the foliage actually changes depending on what part of the world you're in. But there's going to be foliage growing towards certain directions, and that's research that you're going to have to do based on where you're at or where you're going to be going. Right, and even things like the water flushing goes a certain direction. The, you can magnetize a needle with static electricity, put it on top of a leaf and put it in some water. It'll find magnetic north. You should research and find the difference between true north and magnetic north, okay? But at the end of the day, as deep as you want to get into orienteering, the real core essentials are being able to plot a course and being able to get from point A to point B without a GPS, without technology, without actually you know, relying on things that are very possibly not going to be there when you need them most or in the worst type of situations, right? In a grid down scenario, can you get from point A to point B? You can tell by the stars, right? You can tell by the the sun. You can tell not just at sunrise and sunset. The sun, the sun doesn't just rise in the east and set in the west. It also has a full, you know, course throughout the day that you can tell by the shadow. You can create what's basically a zenith or a sun, like what the Romans used to use as a sundial. Uh, so many things that you can do to judge direction, but none of it really helps that much unless you have some sort of a basic idea. Physical maps are great to have, but some sort of a basic idea of where things are. If you live in Florida, you know that if you go south, you're gonna eventually hit water. If you go north, you've got the entire mainland United States to traverse before you get anywhere. You know, that just, basic things and then you can get as really advanced as you want with it what i do really recommend is practicing this stuff guys i recommend practicing this stuff so that you can get good and it could be as simple navigating could be as simple as when you drive next time you take a trip try to you try to get somewhere without using your gps try to use road signs try to use the direction of the sun try to get a, a feel for where you're at just by knowing, getting a feel for direction, by getting a feel of your surroundings. Because the, this day and age, we get so wrapped up into technology that it really just murders our situational awareness. It kills our situational awareness, guys. We need to learn how to get a lot better at situational awareness. And situational awareness doesn't just have to do with the dangers around you in the human form, or even the dangers if we're in the wilderness in animal form, you know, terrain, weather reading the weather to know when a storm's coming all that kind of stuff 
gets way more advanced as to situational awareness as to knowing literally where you're at. You know, did I miss the exit? Did I, how, what exit is it? What number exit is it? How, where, what does this area look like? What are some landmarks? You know, pay attention to your surroundings when you're getting from point A to point B and practice this stuff on a daily basis. Sure, learn how to use a compass. This kit has three compasses in it. All right, you can sacrifice one of the cheaper kits or one of the older kits and one of the, excuse me, you can sacrifice one of the older compasses or, you know, any of the three compasses that are in here, maybe save this one in the package if, for emergencies or just buy another one. Stuff like this isn't crazy expensive and it's very high end, very nice, very good compass you can use with all the, all the features of the map. Get out there, practice doing this stuff with your family, you know, learn how to read a map, learn how to plot a course. If you're, if you're the head of your household or if you're a parent, even then, then tell your kids you're going to plan a camping trip and make it rewarding to them. Uh, set up some plot, you know, some course, plot some points along the way, go out in a, in a national forest area where you're allowed to camp, do some camping and, and give them, you know, Hey, this is a, you can get this benefit from going out here and finding these plots and learning this and you know, whatever. If you're a kid, try and get your parents involved. If you're, you know, whoever, whatever you have, if you've got a girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, wife, I really feel like uh, at the end of the day, why I'm trying to share this stuff is just to try and make my peer group, my part of the world, those who I can have my, you know, influence on the small, the, the few people that I have that are, that are followers or that are, you know, fans of the channel, we can come together and we can make the world a better place just by being better people all around, knowing being more self-sustained, being more uh, reliable, being a better friend, being a better man. In this case, being a navigator is, is being a better man, being able to help a friend in need, being able to be that guy that's, that's, the, that's there in the grid down scenario who's able to, to pull his weight, right? Team member that's uh, the crucial team member. That stuff comes with practice, guys. The knowledge is here in this book that I've written, right? You don't have to buy this all this stuff at retail price. Because if you did, this would be a thousand dollar kit. So I'm kind of sharing not only my knowledge, but my ability to pack a bag that's effective and then buying all the stuff in bulk so that you guys can get it as well and have and get it at an affordable price. I think if we all just come together and, and do our part, we can really make a difference and, and turn things around as we're kind of, you know, it's the wussification of America is one term that I've heard. Americans are just getting soft. We're forgetting where we came from. We're forgetting the frontiersman attitude, the, the self-sustainability that our country was really founded on. And, and we've lost all that. And I think, I think we can still turn it around. If you agree and you're, and you're a fan or a follower, let me know. Comment below. That's how I'm able to keep this stuff coming. That's how I'm able to, to you know, get you guys these deals, get you guys these, these videos, this, drop this knowledge. That's how I'm able to do it is based off of your comments. So I do appreciate, please get involved in the comments. If you like it or if you don't, if you don't like it, let me know and I'll stop making the videos. I'll just come out here and do this stuff on my own. It'll be a whole lot easier and a whole lot more fun to just not have to worry about lugging around all the camera equipment with me to, when I'm doing all this. So thanks for watching. Bone out.